Hi everyone. Today I will show you how to configure smart Ethernet protection. First, let's learn about how SEP is used. We use link backup to improve network reliability. The use of link backup, however, may produce loops, causing broadcast storms and MAC address flapping. As a result, communication quality deteriorates and communication services may even be interrupted. SEP can be deployed on our network to prevent loops and implement link backup. Let's see a configuration example. As shown in Figure 1, the access and aggregation layers are a ring network composed of multiple Layer 2 switching devices. SEP needs to be used at access and aggregation layers. SEP provides the following functions. One, when there is no fault link in the ring network, SEP can prevent loops on the ring network. Two, when a link fault occurs on the ring network, SEP can quickly use a backup link to restore communication between nodes. Let's look at the configuration roadmap. Based on the networking diagram, perform the following configurations. Step A, configure basic SEP functions, such as the SEP segment ID, control VLAN, and protected instance. Step B, add a switch interface to an SEP segment and specify the interface role. Step C, configure a mode in which the interface will be blocked and specify the interface to be blocked. Step D, configure delayed preemption. Step E, configure SEP topology change notification. Now let's move to the configuration procedure. Step A, as shown in the networking diagram, configure basic SEP functions. LSW1 and LSW2 are used as an example. Configure an SEP segment, then control the VLAN and protection instances. The configurations of LSW3 and LSW5 are similar to the configuration of LSW1. And the configuration of LSW4 is similar to the configuration of LSW2. Step B. As shown in the networking diagram, add the interface to the SEP segment and specify the interface role in the SEP segment. LSW1 and LSW2 are used as an example. Configure GE001 on LSW1 as the primary edge interface in SEP segment 1 and GE003 as the secondary edge interface in SEP segment 1. Configure LSW2. Add GE001 and GE003 to SEP Segment 1 and configure GE002 as the primary edge interface in SEP Segment 2. The configurations of LSW3 to LSW5 are similar to the configurations of LSW1 and LSW2. Step C. Specify an interface to block. Specify the interface with the highest priority as the blocked interface in SEP Segment 1 on LSW1 where a primary edge interface is located based on the interface priority. Set the priority of GE001 on LSW4 to 128 and specify GE001 as the blocked interface. Specify the interface with the highest priority as the blocked interface in SEP Segment 2 on LSW2, where a primary edge interface is located based on the interface priority. Set the priority of GE002 on LSW5 to 128 and specify GE002 as the blocked interface. Step D. Configure a preemption mode. Configure delayed preemption in SEP Segment 1 on LSW1 where the primary edge interface is located. Configure delayed preemption in SEP Segment 2 on LSW2 where the primary edge interface is located. Step C. Configure SEP topology change notification. When topology change occurs in an SEP segment at the access layer, the switch immediately reports the change to the SEP segment at the aggregation layer. After receiving a topology change message at the access layer, the aggregation layer will deliver TCBPDUs notifying all devices of deleting MAC addresses and relearn MAC addresses after a topology change at the access layer to ensure non-stop service transmission. Configure LSW2 and LSW4 to report the topology change of SEP segment 2 
to SCP Segment 1. Next, let's show you how to perform the configuration on devices. Log in to LSW1. Perform the following configurations on LSW1. 1. Configure an SCP segment, a control VLAN, and a protected instance. 2. Add an interface to the SCP segment and configure the role of the interface. 3. Configure the interface to block based on the interface priority. 4. Configure delayed preemption. Let's begin the configuration. Enter the system view. Configure SCP segment 1. Configure VLAN 10 as the control VLAN and configure a protected instance. Enter the view of GE001. Configure GE001 as a trunk interface. Disable STP and configure GE001 as the primary edge interface in SEP segment 1. Enter the view of GE003. Configure GE003 as a trunk interface. Disable STP and configure GE003 as the secondary edge interface in SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of Segment 1. Configure the interface to block based on the interface priority and set the preemption delay to 30 seconds. Log in to LSW2. Perform the following configurations on LSW2. Configure an SCP segment, a control VLAN, and a protected instance. 2. Add an interface to the SCP segment and configure the role of the interface. 3. Configure the interface to block based on the interface priority. 4. Configure delayed preemption. 5. Configure SCP topology change notification. Let's begin the configuration. Enter the system view. Configure SCP-1. Configure VLAN 10 as the control VLAN and configure a protected instance. Configure SCP Segment 2. Configure VLAN 20 as the control VLAN and configure a protected instance. Enter the view of GE001. Configure GE001 as a trunk interface. Disable STP and configure GE001 in SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of GE003. Configure GE003 as a trunk interface. Disable STP and configure GE003 in SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of GE002. Configure GE002 as a trunk interface. Disable STP and configure GE002 as the primary edge interface in SCP Segment 2. Enter the view of SCP Segment 2. Configure the interface to block based on the interface priority. Set the preemption delay to 30 seconds and configure the topology change notification of SCP Segment 2 to be reported to SCP Segment 1. Log in to LSW3. Perform the following configurations on LSW3. 1. Configure an SCP segment, a control VLAN, and a protected instance. 2. Add an interface to the SCP segment. Let's begin the configuration. Enter the system view, configure SCP Segment 1, configure VLAN 10 as the control VLAN, and configure a protected instance. Enter the view of GE001, configure GE001 as a trunk interface, disable STP, and configure GE001 in SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of GE003, configure GE003 as a trunk interface, Disable STP and configure GE003 in SCP Segment 1. Log in to LSW4. Perform the following configurations on LSW4. 1. Configure an SEP segment, a control VLAN, and a protected instance. 2. Add an interface to the SCP segment and configure the role of the interface. 3. Configure the interface priority. 4. Configure SCP Topology Change Notification. Let's begin the configuration. Enter the System View. Configure SCP Segment 1. Configure VLAN 10 as the Control VLAN and configure a protected instance. Configure SCP Segment 2. Configure VLAN 20 as the Control VLAN and configure a protected instance. Enter the view of GE002. 
configure GEO02 as a trunk interface, disable STP, and configure GEO02 as the secondary edge interface in SCP Segment 2. Enter the view of GEO03, configure interface type as trunk, disable STP, and configure SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of GEO01, configure GEO01 as a trunk interface, disable STP, and configure GEO01 in SEP Segment 1, and set the priority of GEO01 in SEP Segment 1 to 128. Enter the view of SEP Segment 2, configure topology change notification of SEP Segment 2 to be reported to SEP Segment 1. Log in to LSW5. Perform the following configurations on LSW5. 1. Configure an SCP segment, a control VLAN, and a protected instance. 2. Add an interface to the SCP segment. 3. Configure the interface priority. Let's begin the configuration. Enter the system view, configure SCP segment 2, configure VLAN 20 as the control VLAN, and configure a protected instance. Enter the view of GE001, configure GE001 as a trunk interface, disable STP, and configure GE001 in SCP Segment 1. Enter the view of GE002, configure GE002 as a trunk interface, disable STP, and configure GE001 in SCP Segment 2, and set the priority of GE002 in SCP Segment 2 to 128. That's all for the SCP configuration on the entire network. Let's check the configuration results. To perform delayed preemption in this example, we need to simulate an interface fault and then rectify the fault. Perform the following configurations on LSW2. Enter the view of GE001 and run the shutdown command to simulate an interface fault. Then run the undo shutdown command on GE101 to rectify the fault. Enter the view of GE002 and run the shutdown command to simulate an interface fault. Then run the undo shutdown command on GE102 to rectify the fault. Wait for 30 seconds and run the display SEP topology command. GE001 is blocked on LSW4 in SEP segment 1, and GE002 is blocked on LSW5 in SEP segment 2. That's all for today's introduction to SCP configuration. To obtain more information about common configurations and typical features of Huawei switches, see the All About Switches threads. How can we find these threads? We can enter, quote, All About Switches, unquote, site, colon, Huawei.com. In the search field of Google, and click any of the displayed links to enter Huawei Enterprise Support Community. For details about more features, visit the home page. The All About Switches threads describe typical configurations and users' questions about Huawei switches. Okay, that's all about today's sharing. Thank you.